Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. This is the first module in our deep learning course and in this first module we will be revising about the machine learning topics that we have learnt in our ML course. So in this first module there will be four videos. The first two videos will be on the conceptual aspects of machine learning and the other two videos will be on the Python and hands-on aspects of machine learning. So how we can work in a project and what are all the steps we have to follow and those things will be covered in the next two set of videos. And the purpose of uh, learning these set of topics or revising these topics is that we would have a better understanding of the deep learning concepts that we will discuss later. And the other purpose of doing this is it will be helpful for you if you are going for a machine learning interview or if you are writing some certification exams so that you can revise these topics quickly. So this is the reason I wanted to post these videos and let's get started with this first part of machine learning revision. So in this first part we will be discussing from the basic aspects of machine learning to some of the advanced topics and again in the second part this uh, complexity increases. So we will start from the very basic of what is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. Then we will discuss the different types of machine learning that includes supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So the next topic will be on classification and regression which are the two you know subclasses of supervised learning. Then clustering and association which are the two types of unsupervised learning then we will discuss what is meant by deep learning and what are all the applications of deep learning that we have and next we will try to understand how exactly a machine learning model works and what is the concept behind it and then we will discuss about model evaluation so why we have to do this model evaluation and what are all the important metrics that we use to evaluate our model and the next topic will be on overfitting and underfitting. So once we are clear with this, we will move on to the loss function. So these are all the topics that we will discuss in this first part of video. And in the next part of this machine learning revision, we will discuss about gradient descent, uh, you know, the intuition of different models uh, and so on. So this is what I have planned right now. And let's get started with our first topic, which is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. So this is the first question someone would ask you if you you know uh, are going to a machine learning interview and they wanted to know if you really know about this so this is a very basic question and i hope most of you would know the answer for this already so uh, these are not like three complete uh, different things so in fact artificial intelligence is a broader field and machine learning is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning is further a subset of machine learning so this is the answer you can give them okay so artificial intelligence is like a broader field and machine learning is a subset of it and deep learning is again a subset of machine learning now let's try to understand this in a more detailed way like what is meant by ai what is meant by ml exactly and what is meant by deep learning so what is artificial intelligence and this is the you know uh, definition for this so artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science that is concerned with building smart and intelligent machines okay so artificial intelligence is just a concept where we try to build or we try to make the machines intelligent now there will be a question of what is an intelligent machine and what is a machine that is not intelligent so let's try to understand this with an example let's say we have a watch or a bike okay so these are also machines so we can think about these you know materials or objects as also machines but these are not intelligent because these machines cannot think for themselves so these machines cannot decide what to do on their own rather they are programmed to do a specific task so if you think about a watch the purpose it has is just to show the time so it's like a periodic thing that happens and it doesn't do anything different and if you take a bike again it is built to ride so there is you know no intelligent tasks that is happening so let's try to understand what is an intelligent machine then okay so let's consider this examples now let's say there is a tesla car and we say that this tesla is far more intelligent than a normal bike because it can drive by itself so it doesn't need the input of a driver or it requires only minimal input so the other things it can manage by itself so this is what we call as intelligent machine that can mimic the behavior of human beings that can you know mimic the conscious of an human being so that is what we you know call this as intelligent machines that can make decisions uh, on its own and the other example is google assistant so if you you know ask something to a google assistant it will you know of course tell you an answer and you 
we don't realize that it is a machine so the conversations are so smooth that it actually you know kind of a person talking to us so the uh, other advanced thing that is developed right now is chat gpt which is again a chatbot but you know it kind of has like far more features in it so we will come back to it later but this is the main difference between them so there are machines that are not intelligent and there are machines which are you know built intelligently and they can do the tasks that we humans do so this is the main idea and if you take about this watch example so we have normal watches and we also have smart watches and this smart watches can also be intelligent sometimes so this is the main difference between them now we understood what is meant by artificial intelligence which is to you know it is just the just a science or concept of building intelligent machines now let's try to understand what is meant by machine learning so machine learning is a technique to implement ai that can learn from the data by themselves without being explicitly programmed okay now we know what is meant by ai now what we don't know is how we are going to implement or how we are going to build this ai system so that is why we need machine learning so this machine learning or ml is a technique that we use to build these uh, intelligent machines we call ai okay and how we build this machines is very important so we don't explicitly program that this machine or you know this uh, object has to do something this system has to do something so we are not doing that rather we feed this machine or this system with loads of data and this machine learning system should learn from this data by itself and with this knowledge it should do the task by itself or it should make predictions so that is the entire idea now let's try to understand this with another example let's say i want to build a ai system that can look at an image and say whether that image represents iron man or it represents captain america so this is the uh, you know task that i have and now what i will do is i will take all these images of iron man and captain america and i will train my machine learning model now my machine learning model will try to understand how these superheroes look and when you give a new image it will tell you which superhero that image is so this is what happens in a machine learning so you don't tell that this image is iron man or this image is captain america by explicitly programming it rather you give those images as well as the labels so the machine tries to figure things out by itself so it tries to find the patterns between the images and it it will try to correlate it with the labels that we are giving it so this is about machine learning where the system has to learn from the data that we are providing it so that in the future it can tell you what that particular image is in this example okay now let's try to understand what is meant by deep learning again so i have told you that deep learning is again a subset of machine learning and how this is different is deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that use artificial neural networks to learn from the data so this artificial neural networks is the important aspect in deep learning so in machine learning we have several models like we have logistic regression support vector machine random forest and so on there are like several models and there are a different set of models and we call these models as neural networks and when you use these models we call that as deep learning but the other concept of learning from the data finding the patterns remains the same the only difference is that when you use neural network as your model we call that as deep learning if you use some other models like logistic regression or random forest we call that as machine learning so this is as simple as that okay so and this is how a structure of uh, neural network look like so we have different layers for our neural network and uh, like there are two main layers to this one is input layer and the output layer so in this input layer we feed our data and this output layer finally gives you a prediction and in between these two layers we have several layers called as hidden layers so you have one input layer and one output layer but you can have any number of your hidden layers so that is the catch here okay so you can have three hidden layers or you can have five hidden layers and so on and each layer has multiple neurons attached to it so this one this circle is a neuron so each circle represents neurons and in this case the input layer of our neural networks contain three neurons and this first hidden layer contain four neurons and so on and this output layer contains one neuron so this is how uh, you know we can represent this uh, neural network in a diagram okay so the only difference with the other models and deep learning is that in deep learning we use artificial neural networks okay and now let's move on to the next topic which is the types of machine learning so we have three types of uh, learning in machine learning and these three types includes supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so let's try to understand each of these with uh, you know examples 
first is supervised learning so in supervised learning the machine learning algorithm or the machine learning model learns from labeled data so this term labeled data is very important here okay so let's try to understand what is meant by this labeled data set let's say that we want a system to look at an image and say whether that image represents an apple or a mango so this is the task that we have to accomplish and now we are going to accomplish this using a machine learning model and whenever you are going with a supervised learning approach we will take these images of apples and mangoes and we also give the labels for these images so i will say that this first image represents an apple and this image represents a mango so i will do this for all the images that i have now there are two things here one is your data which is my apple image or a mango image and there is also label to your data so which is nothing but apple or mango okay and now what you will do is you will feed these images and the label to your machine learning model and what this machine learning model now tries to do is find the relationship between this data and your label so it will try to understand like how an apple looks like by going through all the images of apple and it will correlate it with this label called as apple similarly it will go through all the images of mango and tries to understand how mango images look like and it will you know put that as a relationship for this label mangoes and once this learning has done which we call it as training of the machine learning model once we feed a new image and here we don't have to tell what that particular image is and this machine learning model can tell you whether it is an apple or a mango so this is how a uh, ml model works especially in the case of supervised learning so you have a set of data and you have labels for these data and once you feed this once the model has learned from it you just have to feed this data and it will tell you what particular label it belongs to so this is how we work in supervised learning where the important aspect is you have a labeled data set okay now let's try to understand what about unsupervised learning so the only difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning is that in this case the machine learning model learns from unlabeled data set so in this case you won't tell whether that image is an apple or a mango so you just you know feed in the images of apples and mangoes and here this model will just try to group the similar images okay so this is the final result that you would probably get so we have all these images but we are not telling that this image is an apple this image is a mango so, uh, without doing that we are just feeding these images and this model tries to find the similar images and group them together as group one and group two so this is the result that we would get and the difference is that here we don't have any labels so we call this as unlabeled data set so uh, this is the difference between the two but in in general supervised learning is like used far more than unsupervised learning but there are like specific use cases or requirements where we go with unsupervised learning because we won't be having the labels for all the data sets so in that cases we go with unsupervised learning and also when you wanted to group some data so this is the part where we prefer unsupervised learning so these are the two uh, types uh, such as supervised learning and unsupervised learning and the next one is reinforcement learning which is very different from the two other types now let's try to understand this reinforcement learning is an area of machine learning concerned with how intelligent agents take actions in an environment to maximize its reward now this definition can be a bit complex so take a time and just read this once again but i'm sure that you will understand this if i explain this with an example so let's try to understand this so when when it comes to reinforcement learning there are four main aspects to it first is the environment the second is the agent and then action and the final is reward so we have environment agent action and reward now let's try to understand what each of these term mean so let's say that we want to build a computer system that can play chess okay so we are building the system which which needs to play chess well it, it needs to like perform better than human beings so this is the task that we have in this case the environment is chess so there are a set of rules in a environment so in this case uh, you can just think about what can be the rules of a chess environment so it can be you know uh, a soldier can move you know one step or two steps and uh, uh, you know how a uh, knight would move how a bishop would move so all these are the rules in this chess environment okay so we call this computer system which we are building uh, this chess playing system as agent and this as the environment now this agent 
needs to take a action that maximizes its reward so it has to move these pieces at each step and this you know moving of these pieces is called as an action and for each good action it would get a reward so this is what this action and reward mean so now we have to ask what is a good action so how can you say that a particular action is a good action and this action is a bad action so if this uh, action or if this step increases the chance of winning this chess game we call that as a good action and in this case the machine learning model or this agent would get a positive reward so what this agent tries to do is maximize the reward it gets so that is the entire idea so you have a agent that uh, you know do something in this environment which basically takes action and for each action it will get a reward so in reinforcement learning the agent kind of plays with itself several times several thousand times or even million times and each time it will get better so once this model is completely trained it can perform way better than like other systems that are built for playing chess so this is the idea of reinforcement learning now if you try to read this definition again now it would make more sense so reinforcement learning is a area of ml concerned with how intelligent agents take actions in an environment to maximize its reward okay so the applications of reinforcements mainly you know goes to this uh, building game playing systems game playing ai uh, you know how a robot walks and so on so all these aspects are done using reinforcement learning okay so these are all the three aspects of uh, or the three types of machine learning so one is supervised learning where you have labeled data set and then you have unsupervised learning where you have unlabeled data set and finally reinforcement learning where you have this agent environment action and reward okay now let's move on to the next topic which is the types of supervised learning that includes classification and regression so uh, the two types of supervised learning as i told includes classification and regression and let's try to understand what each of these two terms mean so this is like very important so this is what we do like most of the time so most of the use cases that we work on would be a classification problem or a regression problem so like pay attention closely so classification is about predicting a class or discrete values example male or female true or false so this is the example of classification so in classification we have several data points and we we try to say that what class a particular data point belongs to it can be you know as we have discussed already we, we can try to build a system that tells you whether an image is an apple or a mango so that is one example or you can you know uh, uh, build a system that can tell you whether a person has diabetes or not so all these are classes you can have two classes or you can have like more classes so you can build a system that can tell you whether a image represents a cat or a dog or a horse or a lion so in this case you have four classes so all these comes under classification where you you are just simply predicting a class or a type that particular data point belongs to as given in this example male or female true or false as in like a person having diabetes or not now let's try to understand about regression so regression is a bit different from classification where we are trying to predict a quantity or a continuous value let's say that you are predicting like how much salary a person is going to make based on his skills work experience and so on or you are predicting the price of a person uh, uh, sorry you, you are predicting the age of a person or you are trying to predict the price of a car all these comes under regression problem where we are trying to find a numerical value or a continuous value whereas in the case of classification we are just like classifying data points to different classes or discrete classes so this is the difference between these two and we just like you know let's try to understand this with another example let's say that we want to build an image recognition system that can recognize whether an image is a dog or a cat so in this case as it is a supervised learning approach we give the model images as well as the labels which is nothing but this dog and cat so all these uh, images of dog will have the label as dog and all the images of cat will have the label as cat and now we feed this images as well as the label to our supervised learning model and once this model has learned now it can tell you whether a new image represents a dog or a cat so this is a classification problem where we are classifying between these two classes now let's try to understand the example of regression let's say based on the temperature of a particular day we are trying to predict the rainfall in centimeter if you think about this rainfall in centimeter is like a continuous value it can be like any number right so in this case we feed this temperature data and the rainfall data to our model and for a for a specific day or for a upcoming day it can tell you 
based on this temperature what is the rainfall that you can expect in centimeter so this is the difference where in classification we are classifying between classes it can be two classes or three classes or any number of classes but in the class of regression in the case of regression we are trying to predict some numerical or continuous value so this is the difference between these two and we have like different models for uh, uh, these two tasks that we have to do so examples of classification models includes your decision tree classifier random forest classifier k nearest neighbor classifier logistic regression so all these are examples of classification and one thing to note here is this is very important so this is logistic regression so the name of this model is logistic regression which is a very basic model but we use this a lot even though its name is regression we use it for classification so that is something that you can remember so this cannot be used for a regression problem so these are like some examples of classification and in the case of regression you have polynomial regressor and you also have support vector machine regressor and so on and there is also other thing some models can be used for both classification as well as regression so say for example a decision tree classifier instead you can also build a decision tree regressor which can predict you continuous values you can also you know have random forest classifier and random forest regressor similarly you have support vector machine regressor and you also have a different classifier called a support vector machine classifier so most of the models can be used for uh, uh, both of these tasks but there are few models that are like exclusive say for example logistic regression which can be used only for classification so these are some of the uh, you know examples of classification model and regression model and now let's move on to the next topic which is the types of unsupervised learning which includes in, includes clustering and association okay so let's try to understand this clustering so clustering is an unsupervised task which involves grouping similar data points as we have you know seen this in, in uh, this apple and mango example where we are trying to group similar images or similar data so that is about clustering whereas in association it is slightly different so it is an unsupervised task again unsupervised we don't give any labels labels to the model we just give the data which can be numerical values or it can be text or it can be images so we give this uh, uh, unlabeled data set to this unsupervised learning model and it will try to find the important relationship between the data points so how a particular data point is similar to uh, other data points so how it is like associated with other data point okay so let's try to understand these two things with uh, again example so that it makes more sense first let's discuss about this clustering example let's say that you're working in a uh, telecommunication company or something like where uh, they have this like they basically provide like network thing to the customers so you have a data that tells like what is the average call duration for a person in a month and what is their network usage or what is their like internet usage and now Let's say we are feeding this to our machine learning model. Again, you don't have any classes here. You just have, uh, you know, details on like how, how, you know, what's the call duration of a particular person and how, what's the internet usage of a particular person. Similarly, you have this data for several thousand people. And now you feed this to your clustering model, which is your unsupervised learning model. And this model will try to group similar customers. So this is how uh, one such example can look like. Let's say we are building two clusters. So this is one example. Let's let's try to figure out what can be these two clusters. So one can be those. So let's say that this group represents the people who have a very large call duration, but they are not using internet that much. Okay. And this group includes people who are using network features more, who are, you know, using this internet more, but they are not, you know, uh, uh, they don't have like a higher call duration. Now, this is the information that we gain from this model based on this grouping and the business uh, uh, advantage of this is for those people who don't have higher internet usage you can probably uh, give offers on you know network right so you can give offers on uh, internet recharge because they are anyway going to you know have a higher call duration so it could be profitable for the company and similarly for this uh, group of people who have higher internet usage and lesser call duration they can also get some offers on this uh, you know recharge on calling so this is just one example of how this clustering can be used where this will try to group uh, data points based on similarities okay now let's try to understand association with example where i have told you that it will try to figure out what is the important associations between data points so let's say that there is a supermarket and a customer goes and buys these products so he buys bread 
milk, fruits and wheat. Okay. And there is another customer who buys bread, milk, rice and butter. Right. So, if you see few products are kind of associated. Say for example, bread and milk. So, we can say that most of the time a customer if he buys bread, he also buys you know milk. So, if there is a new customer who is buying milk, they can suggest sorry if they are buying bread they can also suggest milk right so let's say now when customer 3 goes and, and and buys bread it is highly likely it's you know highly likely that he will also buy milk so this is the reason why like similar products are kind of kept together in the supermarket so this is what we called as also we call as association but one data point is kind of associated to some other data point in some way right so this is all about association where we try to associate this so the other example of this association is uh, you know this movie recommendation system where uh, let's say uh, there is a viewer in netflix or amazon prime who watches some movie let's say that person is watching a spider-man movie in netflix and after watching this he goes and watch movies like let's say batman dark knight or something and there is another viewer and this particular viewer also watches spider-man and based on the insights that netflix has collected for the previous customer it now can suggest batman movie to this new viewer and it's highly likely that he is going to watch that particular movie so this is what association is all about where we will try to associate different data points so that it could add some value to our business so this is all about association and again for those unsurprised learning models we have like these different set of models like k-means clustering hierarchical clustering principal component analysis and so on and for this we also have association models like a priori and eclat so these are like some examples of unsupervised learning models where you can train these models without giving labels so you basically train these models with unlabeled data set okay so this is all about unsupervised learning and now let's discuss what is meant by deep learning right so deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks to learn from the data so as we have discussed before uh, you know and uh, let's try to understand it's interesting like how this deep learning kind of came into picture so these artificial neural networks are actually inspired from the neural neural networks that we have in our body so we have central nervous systems and we also have this peripheral nervous system this this central nervous system basically constitutes your brain and spinal cord and in this nervous systems you have several neurons that are interconnected okay so this is the structure of a neuron or you call this nerve cell so you have your dendrites which are this finger like projections and you have the cell body which has a nucleus which is a very important part and you also have a long tail that we call as axon and in the end we have these axon terminals and you have this structure called a synapse so this is a structure which connects to the dendrites of the other neuron okay so it is just like a, a very highly interconnected system where dendrite of one neuron is connected to the axon terminal of other neuron through the synapses it's basically like uh, several interconnections right so let's say there is an information that that's coming to this finger projections called as dendrites and this information is processed in this nucleus and it is like passed on to this uh, axon terminal and from here it is passed on to other neurons so this is the same concept that we use in artificial neural networks as well so if you say this we have already seen that we have different layers so we have this input layer and output layer and you have like multiple hidden layers to this and each layer can have multiple neurons so this neuron is similar to this circle we have here so you have a neuron and this neuron is connected to the all the other neurons in the next layer so you you can see that this direction represents that this neuron is connected to this neuron and there is another direction that symbolizes that this neuron is connected to this one so similarly one neuron in one layer is connected to all the other neurons in the next layer so this is what makes a deep neural network and uh, this is again basically inspired from our, our you know biological neural networks that we have right so this is all about deep learning where we use neural networks to train the data so what happens here is your data goes to this neurons so some processing happens there so basically there are some mathematical functions so this information gets processed and this processed information is fed to the neurons of the other layers and this process continues until to a point where it reaches the output layer and you get your final prediction so this is all about a, 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 you know a neural network could work just in a very overview and most of the ai applications that we have today 
are built using deep learning so few examples are you know we have several deep learning applications in healthcare so one such example is uh, mainly in this you know uh, radiology department where you just look at a scan and say that whether there is some abnormality let's say that there is a brain scan and, and but doctors are trying to figure out whether there is some hemorrhage in that scan so you can build a deep learning model or a you know neural network that can learn from this scanned images and tell whether there is some abnormalities or there is some hemorrhage in it so that is one such example and the other example can be you know this autonomous car so these autonomous cars like tesla kind of uses uh, deep learning in its core for building that you know autonomous system that can drive by itself so and you also have this computer vision which is all about image recognition like looking at an image and telling that what image or you know that thing represents and so on so few other examples could be your face recognition system uh, your iris scanner and so on so similarly autonomous cars also uses computer vision for its you know basically navigation and other details and then we have this natural language processing so we call this call this as nlp so google assistant alexa siri kind of works on this nlp things okay where if you say it something it can understand and it can like answer you with pro appropriate information that you can that you need so these are some of the interesting applications of deep learning okay so this is about the main types of types so we have discussed like what is meant by the supervised unsupervised reinforcement learning and we have also discussed what is meant by deep learning and we will move on to the next concept and this is a very interesting thing and like it's it's very basic to know how does a machine learning model works so people think that machine learning is a very complex subject but it is not so if you are clear with the basics it is like so much fun it is so much easier to understand so that's why i wanted to explain like how does a machine learning model works in a basic level so that will be the topic for this particular uh, section so let's get started so when it comes to a machine learning uh, use case there are like two main aspects to it one is your data and the other one is your machine learning model so you cannot build a machine learning model if you don't have these two things right so you need some data and you need some machine learning model to work on that data so let's try to understand how this machine learning model can learn from the data all right so let's say that we have two variables the first variable is your x and the second variable is your y and let's say x is an independent variable and y is a dependent variable of x now these two are very important terms let's try to understand this when i say independent variable that means the values of x does not depends on any factor and whereas y is a dependent variable of x that means this value of y is dependent on this value so this seven is dependent on two so all the values of y are dependent on some x values okay so the other way to say this would be if the x value is one y value will be five if x value is two y value will be seven and so on so this is the thing that we have right and now what i wanted to find is for a given value of x what will be the value of y so we have this one two three four and five let's say what will be the value of y when x value is 2.5 or what will be the value of y when the value of x is like 10 so this is what we wanted to find so there are like simple ways to find this let's try to see how we could do that so let's say that we are plotting these points in a graph so we have this x values in this x axis and y values in our y axis so we have this so the first point is 1 comma 5 which is represented here so it's 1 in x axis and, and 5 in y axis so similarly we have plotted all these five points and these points can be joined together by a line now for a given value of x you can find the value of y so if the value of x is 2.5 so i just try to find where it meets this line so it would be around 8 right so this is the uh, concept behind this so once you find this relationship between this x and y or if you try to fit this points to some line or a curve you can find y values for any x value so similarly once you have drawn this line for a particular x value like 10 you can find what can be the y value so that is the idea behind this and we know that uh, like this is the concept by which machine learning model works as well 
so you have a dependent variable and you have an independent variable so your dependent will be y and independent will be x so similarly what it will try to do is so it will try to find this relationship in this case the relationship is this line which joins all these points so this machine learning model will also try to do the same so it as a data set that looks like this so we have all this number so we have this pairs of numbers so it will try to find what is the relationship between these numbers so once this relationship is found which is nothing but line in this case no matter what x value you give it can accurately predict what can be the y value right so this is how machine learning model works so you give this data to it so it tries to find what is the relationship between this x and y or in other words what is the relationship between your dependent variable and independent variable and once this process is done for any new set of values you can predict your y value right so that that is the basis of machine learning so in this case we have a line that joins all these points and we know that equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus c and this m is nothing but your slope and c is your intercept so slope or this m basically dictates like what is the orientation of your line is going to be and c intercept is nothing but this point so c intercept is what is your y value when your x value is zero so that will be c right so i'll, I'll explain this in a more detailed way with a example okay so let's say we have this points that are plotted here and we know that the equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c right and now let's say we want to find the values of m and c so how you can find this is let's take two points so the first point is 2 comma 7 and second point is 3 comma 9 so 2 comma 7 is this one so 2 comma 7 and this is 3 comma 9 so we have p1 and p2 which is my point 1 and point 2 and this is the formula to find your slope so y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so 2 comma 7 is nothing but my x1 comma y1 and 3 comma 9 is x2 comma y2 so you just need to substitute these values and you will get the values as 9 minus 7 divided by 3 minus 2 and you would get this as 2 now m is equal to 2 uh, now let's see how we can find this intercept as i've told you there are two ways to find this so you can plug in a particular point value which can be 2 comma 7 or it can be 3 comma 9 and you also put this 2 value you will find the value of intercept or the other way would be to substitute the value of m and substitute the value of x as 0 like say for example in this case you can put y as instead of y you can put 7 and instead of x you can put 2 similar to this point and instead of this x you can put 0 so in other words c value is equal to your y value when x is 0 so that is your intercept so if you change your intercept this line meets your y-axis in a different point so that is my intercept so in this case let's try to find this intercept so let's consider this point which is 4 comma 11 so you are substituting this so y is equal to 2x plus c and you are putting this 11 is equal to 2 of 4 plus c and in this case your c value will be 3 so similarly if you put your x value as 0 it's the same thing that you would get okay so this is how you find your slope value and your intercept value now let's dig deeper into this slope so we have this equation of the line is y is equal to 2x plus 3 and this is how we represent slope so m is equal to dy by dx or in other words how much your y value changes when your x value changes so that is your slope that means 2 so what this 2 means is if your x value changes by 1 your y value changes by 2 right so this is what slope means so this is we have represented this in differential terms which is differential calculus is nothing but just infinitesimal change that is happening over variable so in this case as i have told you how much your y changes when your x changes by a small factor so that is your m so in this case once you have this m and c you can find this relationship so you just like plug in these values to this line like in this case the m is m value is 2 and c value is 3 so this equation will become uh, y is equal to 2x plus 3 so for any x value now you can find your y value so similarly what this machine learning model will do is it will take all these data as we have seen so here we have seen a table right which has these values so it will take all these values so once it has all these values it will try to find this parameter values so in this case the parameters are my m and c and once this parameter values are found now it can tell you uh, for a new value of x what is your y value so that is the entire 
concept of how a, a machine learning model works only the complexity changes but the working is the same right so the inference here is the above line equation is a function that relates x and y right so we have y and we have x so you can think about this x as your data and your y as your label okay and for a given value of x we can find the corresponding value of y if you find this equation so this is what we are trying to find so all we are trying to find is an equation that relates your label to your data and here for this you need to find this parameter values and this is what a machine learning model will try to find based on the data that you give okay so i hope this clear this is clear like how a machine learning model works so the only thing that changes is the different forms of the model that we have like we cannot have a linear relationship between the variables all the time so in this case like uh, we have a line but this line doesn't join all these points right so previously we have seen a line that join all these points so this is called as a linear regression model similarly we cannot use a line in all the cases so in this case the equation of this line is y is equal to b0 plus b1x which is similar to y is equal to mx plus c and in these cases where you have a data like this you cannot fit a line to these data points rather you need a curve like this and we call this as a polynomial model right y is equal to b0 plus b1x plus b2x1 square so this is what we call a polynomial equation okay so similarly this is what i have mentioned here we cannot have a linear relationship between the variables all the time variables are nothing but my x and y okay so the next topic that we will be discussing is model evaluation now let's try to understand why we need this uh, you know model evaluations uh, let's say that you have your data you have trained your model but this model cannot go to production yet it you know can't be featured in some application yet because we don't know how well our model performs and this is why we need to evaluate our model and this process is called as model evaluation and we have certain metrics to evaluate our model depending on the task that we are doing okay let's say that we are working on a classification problem where we are we are trying to classify the data points to two different class so in this case we go with accuracy score as our metric now let's try to understand what is this accuracy score and how to calculate this so in classification problems accuracy score is the ratio of number of correct predictions to the total number of input data points so let's say that uh, you have uh, 500 images that you have to predict like what class it belongs to let's say of a dog and cat and out of these 500 images how many images are correct so how many for how many images the model has given you correct prediction so this is my number of correct predictions so the formula to calculate this accuracy score will be number of correct predictions divided by total number of data points into 100% so let's say that the number of correct predictions made by your model is 128 and the number of total number of data points that you have is 150 that means out of 150 data points or in this example let's say out of 150 images of dogs and cats the model has predicted correctly for 128 images and in this case your accuracy score will be 85.3 which is nothing but this 128 divided by 150 into 100% so your accuracy score is 85.3 percentage so each time we try to reach as you know high accuracy as possible but it's not possible always so in general we can say if the model has uh, uh, more than 80 or 85 percentage accuracy it's it's a good model but it it can't be reached all the time and there are also cases we need a, a model that is highly accurate say for example in health care most of the use cases that we work on we want to achieve a very good accuracy score because of the critical nature of the problem that we are solving okay so that is one aspect that you can remember but in general 80 85 percentage is a good accuracy okay so if you have 90 95 percentage that is like really good and uh, we have a mod more you know library uh, in python called as sklearn and in this sklearn there is a module called as matrix and from this you can import this accuracy score function so you just like give this prediction made by the model and you give like uh, the uh, ground truth which are your actual predict actual labels and this accuracy score will compare and it will basically give you your accuracy score so you don't need to manually calculate all these things so this is for calculation so sorry this is for classification problems and in the case of regression problem where we are trying to predict some continuous continuous numerical values we can go with metrics such as error values like mean absolute error uh, mean squared error root mean squared error and so on 
so mean uh, let's discuss about this mean squared error alone for now so mean squared error measures the average of the squares of the errors that is the average square difference between the estimated values and the actual value estimated value is your predicted value actual actual value is your true value say for example you are predicting the price of a house so the value predicted by your model will be your estimated value and the actual value will be like what's the real price of that house and the formula in this case for msc which is my mean squared error will be 1 by n where n is the total number of data points that you have summation of yi minus yi cap whole square so you so you subtract this yi and yi cap square it and you you know just you know find the summation of all these differences divided by n which is the total number of data points so that will give you your mean squared error here yi is my actual value and yi cap is my predicted value okay so <clears throat> let's say actual value is uh, yi which is 140 mg per dl let's say we are predicting what is the you know glucose level in a person's blood so the actual value is 140 mg and based on certain factors let's say we are building a model that can predict this value and the value predicted by this model is 160 so you just plug in this value here so you do this for all the data points that you have find the summation and you will have your mean squared error so if you find the square root of this so that will be your root mean squared so similarly we also have a mean absolute error which is just like the actual difference between the error values and you find the summation of this so you don't do the squares and so on right so these are some of the important metrics that we have for regression problems and so that is about uh, model evaluation so we also have other you know metrics such as confusion metrics <clears throat> precision recall and so on but we will discuss about these things later now uh, similar to sklearn.metrics accuracy score we have this function called as mean squared error in sklearn.metrics which can be used to calculate this uh, mean squared error value okay <clears throat> So the next topic that we are going to discuss is overfitting. So this is a very important concept and we run into this issue all the time. So let's try to understand what is meant by this overfitting. So our model won't perform well in all the cases. Okay. So one such problem that we face is this overfitting. So overfitting refers to a model that models the training data too well. Or in other words, I can say it, it has learned from the training data too well. Overfitting happens when a model learns from the detail and noise in the training data set to the extent that it negatively impacts the performance of the model. Let's try to understand this. So this definition wouldn't make much sense. Uh, but let's try to understand this with an example so that we would understand this definition better. So this is an optimal model. Okay, so you, we have our, uh, you know two variables. So this is my x-axis variable. And this is my y-axis variable. And these green circles are my data points. I'm trying to draw a curve that's close to all these points. So this is how an optimal model would look like. But what happens when overfitting is there? So what happens in this case will be you will get a model that kind of looks like this. So it will try to touch all the points or it will try to build a model such that it is close to all the points. So this is what we call as overfitting. So the problem with overfitting is that uh, your model is not generalized. So your model will work well on training data, but your test data won't perform well. So you have your two data sets, your training data on which we train the model and then you have a test data on which we do the model evaluation so we have discussed this model evaluation previously right so before training the model what we will do is we will split our entire data let's say you have 1000 data points or 1000 rows in your data we take 800 rows from this as your as our training data and we train the model and with the remaining 200 data points we test our model for model evaluation and how we can understand that overfitting happens is so your training data accuracy will be very high and your test data accuracy will be low like uh, your training data accuracy can be 95 percent and your test data accuracy will be like 75 percent so this is one sign that overfitting has happened to our mo happened to our model which means it has tried to learn a lot from the data that it is it is not like uh, you know it's not generalizing the learning so that is about overfitting and uh, let's just quickly try to understand with another like numerical example so you have your x and y and your y value is dependent on x and we need to find the relationship between these two variables or a curve that that's close to these data points okay so let's try to plot these uh, points so 
this is how a overfitted model would look like so these points are nothing but what's given here so this is how a overfitted model will look like which will try to be close to all the data points or it will try to touch all the data points that is there in this graph and this is how a good fit or an optimum optimal model would look like so it will try to catch the trend in the data but it won't try to fit to all the data points that's there so this is a good fit and this is your overfitted model so what happens here is when there is overfitting when you give a new data for your testing it won't perform well so your accuracy and the performance will drop whereas in the case of good fit the training data accuracy and your test data accuracy will be close to each other and the value will also be good so you, let's say you would get uh, values of like 80 percentage and 80 percentage in your training data test data whereas in the case of overfitting you would get uh, you know uh, values as 90 99% training data and 80% test data accuracy so the, it means that overfitting has happened so we always try to reach a point where we have good fit where we have good metrics for both training data accuracy as well as test data accuracy okay now let's discuss what are all some of the reasons that causes overfitting and how to prevent or or solve this issue of overfitting so one of the reasons for overfitting to happen is having less data if you don't have several columns in your uh, model overfitting happens it also happens when you have a smaller data set and increased complexity of the model like when you are using a very complex model like say for example when all the points can be joined can be joined by a straight line in that case if you use a more complex polynomial model in that case uh, overfitting happens like models like random forest and neural networks tends to overfit most of the time so that is one such example so what we can do is like use a simple model if your model is overfitting and more number of layers in neural networks so in the case of deep learning if you have several number of hidden layers in a neural network there is a chance that your model is going to overfit and how we can prevent or solve this overfitting issue is using more data right uh, you don't need a lesser data and like there is an optimum number so you you can't keep on increase increasing the columns and you can't have a very lesser number of columns it's like a balance that we have to maintain so if you have lesser number of columns then there is a chance for underfitting to happen if there are more number of columns then there is a chance of overfitting to happen so it is like a balance that we have to achieve and then like reducing the number of layers in our neural network so that our model is simpler comparing okay so that is one such example of doing it and early stopping so early stopping is nothing but like stopping the training of neural network if if there is a sign that it is going to overfit and bias variance straight up so again this is a very complex topic so i have made a video separately so you might want to look at it if you want to understand it better but in general bias is like the error that the model is making so it's like a bias value that we add to this model and variance is like how much the difference in your data is like variance is like uh, let's say you have your training data and you have your test data which is very much different from your training data in that case we say that that as a variance so achieving a balance between these two things also helps our model to prevent both overfitting as well as underfitting and then you have this dropouts so this reducing the number of layers uh, early stopping and use dropouts so all this comes under neural networks okay so these are some ways we can prevent overfitting and similar to overfitting we also have another issue called as underfitting so it's just opposite to this overfitting so let's try to understand this underfitting happens when the model does not learn enough from the data underfitting occurs when a machine learning model cannot capture the underlying trend of the data set so again so this is the optimal model that is close to almost all the data points that we have and this is how an underfitted model would look like so this line is much simpler so this model is much simpler compared to this optimal model and the problem is it, it's not close to most of the data points so we call this underfit and when your model is underfitting so how you can determine it is you won't you know you, you will have low accuracy for both the training data as well as the test data right so in both the cases the accuracy won't be high whereas in the case of overfitting the training data accuracy will be high and the test data accuracy will be low whereas in the case of underfitting both accuracy values will be low so i mean that model is not like good at all so we have to do a lot in order to make it perform better so let's consider again another example let's say this is the data that we have so when your x value is minus 10 your y value is 100 when your x value is minus 9 your y value is 81 so similarly this is the data that we have and we need to build a model that tries to capture the relationship between these data points okay so here we have this and this is how an underfitted model would look like so in this case 
no matter what's the line we draw we cannot fit these data points to a straight line right and this is how a optimal model or a good fit would look like so this is the curve we need in this case so here this is my underfitted model and this is a optimal model right so this is about underfitting where where we are trying to use in the if our model is uh, underfitted we will try to use a more complex model okay so again causes for understanding like underfitting can be choosing a wrong model like when you need a complex model like a polynomial model instead you are using a linear regressor which is a straight line in that case there is a chance that your model is going to underfit and less complex complexity of the model again if your model is not like complex enough in that case your model is going to underfit less variance but i bias so i have told you about this uh, bias and variance right so bias variance trade off is nothing but like changing or or altering these values such that there is a balance between the two so that like when you have a good balance of bias and variance you can you know prevent both overfitting as well as underfitting like choosing the correct model appropriate for the problem as we have discussed like increasing the complexity increasing the again complexity of the model they kind of mean the same thing uh, more number of parameters to the model like how i can say this is underfitting also happens when you don't have that much columns in your data set like if you have lesser number of columns there is nothing for the model to learn so if you have the option to increase the number of columns in your data set you can you know solve this issue of underfitting but it, it is only to a point if you keep on increasing the number of columns your model may tend to overfit so that is one thing again bias variance trade off can be done in order to prevent this underfitting okay and the next topic the last topic that we will discuss in this video is loss function so let's try to understand what is meant by this loss function and again this is a very important aspect and we use this loss function internally in all the models that we work on in machine learning so loss function measures how far an estimated value is from its true value okay so estimated value you can think about it as predicted value so it basically measures what is the distance or what is the difference between your true value and your predicted value and there are like several uses to this so it is helpful to determine which model performs better and which parameters are better it's basically to find like your best model and also which parameters are best for your model so it's it's basically used to optimize your model so uh, let's try to understand how how this is helpful okay so this is one example of a loss function so you have like different loss function this is one example so this is similar to the mean squared error that we have seen so it is like similar to this so loss is equal to 1 by n summation of n y i minus y i cap all square right so we also call this cost function so there is a slight difference between these two terms loss function and cost functions sometimes people use this you know synonymously but there is a difference between them so try to understand this when you find the difference between the true value and the predicted value for one single data point we call that as loss function if you try to find this and try, find the summation of all the differences like uh, the difference of predicted value and the true value for all the data points that is called as your cost function so i'm just repeating this loss function is the difference between estimated value and true value for single data point and cost function is the summation of all the loss function values so that is it okay so this is one such loss function that we use in linear regression similarly we have different loss function for different models so we cannot use the same loss function formula for a classification problem so we go with like other loss function so similarly we have different loss functions like cross entropy loss squared error loss scale divergence and so on so these are like few examples so let's try to understand what is the significance of this loss function and how this can be helpful to determine which model is better and which parameters are better okay so let's say that uh, there is a data set like these are the data points that we have and the optimum fit for this model would be this curve okay which is like close to almost all the data points that we have and it also catches the trend which is to a certain extent y like you know uh, y value is not changing that much but after a point y value is increasing if the x value is increasing so this is the trend that we are getting and let's say this is the equation of this line okay so y is equal to 0.000 so this many zeros 3x cube plus x square x 
So this is basically a polynomial equation, which is a degree three polynomial equation. So I have this x cube term, x square term, and x term, and I have this constant. So this is the model. Let's say this this is the optimum model that we have, but we don't know this straight away. We just have this data, right? Now we have three people who are suggesting models for this particular data points. Okay, so we have a data and we are like asking three different people to find an optimum model for this. And the first person comes up with the equation. This is the equation this first person is coming up with. And this is the equation of the second person. And this is the equation of third person. And we know that this is the most optimum model. Or, you know, let's say that this is the actual equation. So we can also say that now we have to find out of these three people which equation is more close to the actual uh, you know equation so let's say that you have your x value and this is your actual y value so actual y value is nothing but like this one so you have your data you have your x and y for a, a set for a, a certain x value your y value is this so that is given by this second column so for x value your y value is this and this y1 value is derived from this first person's equation so if you put your x value in this equation you will get this so similarly y2 is for this second person and y3 is for this third person now we have to find which person has given us the most accurate results and in this case we can again go with our loss function like in this case we are going to test this for let's say y1 so loss is equal to this is the formula and uh, let's try to understand how we can do that so it is nothing but we find the difference square them do the summation and divide it by n which is your total number of data points your total number of data points is 5 so your n value becomes 5 now what we have to do is find the difference between your true value which is yi and your predicted value which is yi cap in this case x is my independent variable y is my true value and all these are individual predicted values so first i will find this for y1 or, or you know the last function value for the first person's model and how I can do this is ya minus ya cap that means uh, 0 0.30 sorry so this is x this one so I have to subtract these two so 0 0.35 minus 0 0.38 and square them so this is what I have written here so last one that means last function of the first person is 0 0.35 y minus y i cap which is y1 cap so 0 0.35 minus 0 0.38 square plus 0 0.48 minus 0 0.05 square so similarly i'll subtract all this term square this this is my summation and divided by 5 which is my n and in this case the loss function value is 0 0.173 so lower loss value means my model is working well or how i can say this like lower the loss value more accurate my results are okay so let's say out of these three models that we have seen out of the models given by three people let's say that loss function of one that is the loss value is less for the model given by the first person right so basically let's say this person has given us the best model so this is the end point that we are reaching so low loss value that means your model is close to all the data points what that means is you are having a higher accuracy so in other words your loss function or your cost function has to be minimum so when your cost function or your loss function is minimum your accuracy will increase so this is the idea so i should have put this as cost instead of loss as we are taking the summation but let it be there so what we try to do when we train the model is optimize the model such that your loss function value is decreasing so how we will do this by altering the parameter values so again so that comes to the topic of gradient descent which we will start with in the next topic but for now understand this so our goal is to minimize this loss function value so that our accuracy or the performance of the model increases that is about this loss function so it just tries to find the difference between the predicted value and the true value and once as you have this metric you can say that this model performs well or, or for a particular model let's say for linear regression for this this slope value and for this parameter value i'm getting good results how you can do this by is, is by finding this loss function or your cost function value similarly for different models we have different loss functions like we have cross entropy loss quite error loss scale divergence loss and so on so this is a very important uh, topic and i'm sh i'm sure you're like clear with it okay so uh, that is all for this first part of machine learning revision i hope you are clear with all the concepts that is discussed here and i'll see you in the next upload where we will discuss about some of the uh, you know 
advanced conceptual aspects of machine learning again later we will go with uh, you know the python and hands on aspects okay so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks all